It's time to take a look at the debut of that brand new outlaw truck and the new grave digger for 1990. There's Mike Wine, Pensacola, New Jersey, the Ford, the Jersey Outlaw. This will be a qualifying run along with the grave digger, Dennis Anderson. Brand new home shop for Dennis Anderson. I love the name, Army. Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Well, if you're driving a monster truck that goes by the name of the Grave Digger, I guess that's where you're going to be from. You know, he rolls into the lines against his Ford. And you cannot underestimate the outlaw Ford. Not just a new dress, this is a whole new truck, and Mike Wine really believes in this vehicle this year, Scott. Qualifying run. Oh, both trucks getting down there. Very, very close. And you can see shutdown's kind of tight. Under five seconds on both trucks, Scott. Indeed, just seven hundred separating them. Great digger, though, with the faster time. Outlaw, though, should be very high up on the list. Lots of Grave Digger fans in Charleston, West Virginia, as they Serious. are everywhere. You see them, you see them looking. You know what they're looking for? They know liquidators out there. They're looking for the other guy. That's the Grave Digger, Dennis Anderson. Now out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. And man, you know, the most popular monster truck said the one thing he lacked in 1989 was enough win. Every time out, he thinks he can win in 1990. Watch the hill. Anderson told me, he says, we used to worry about driving over the hill. He said, I'm going to fly over it. Whoa, he does just that. And fly he does. you got to remember, the engine and the grave diggers to the rear. He drives that truck different than anybody. Now, punch and go. Fly over the hump, get over the cars, and go into the second round. Getting them roaring in Charleston already. Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger starts 1990 with a win in his first race as he puts Liquidator on the trailer. Well, Dennis Anderson, 1989, a lot of people saying there's a lot of talk. This is 1990. Can you do it this year? Yeah, I think so, Army. I've, uh, you know, we're starting out with the old truck. I've got a new one coming out. We're going to do a, a truck change in the middle of the season here. We put a small motor in the truck, and it's been working well. We were in Canada last week, and it worked real good with us. And I think I'm going to do it this year. We well, understand you just got quick time of the night. 442. We'll let you get back to the pit area. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what he was talking about, the rules will allow you to make one change in the truck. He's going to physically change trucks. He's going to get some points with this truck. When the new truck's done, he's going to dial in on the new one for 1990. Says it's going to be the year for him. Let's watch him and put it out down. on the track. The Grave Digger and Mopar Magic. This ought to be a dandy because Mopar has already shown just in our qualifying and in the first round of competition that it's not the Mopar from 89. He too is a much improved truck, but Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger started strong in 89, faded and ended up not finishing with a flurry. Looks like he's got his act together and is ready to come out of the gate strong in 1990. Remember, Anderson with the Grave Digger on the left of your screen runs a rear engine setup. The weight's to the rear. New driving to have him over the jump. What is this? Drives over those cars. Dennis Anderson, as the crowd roars for the Grave Digger, Anderson knows he's made it to the final four in the first event of 1990 on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Well, isolated on the Grave Digger. Yeah, see, the front wheels never bounced up. Oh, that was some beautiful driving there. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger, Marvin Smith and the Wild Hair, Mike Wine and the Outlaw, Kid Rarig and the Thunder Chicken, they are all still alive. And what a foursome we've got as Anderson waves to the cheering crowd of Charleston. We'll meet He's the Grave down. Digger or Wild Hair. What a final we got coming up. But Army, this semifinal ought to be a dandy. You know Dennis Anderson is backing off, and Marvin Smith has shown us he is going to step back from nobody in 1990. The wild hair has been in all-out attack mode all night. And remember, these were the fast two qualifiers, wild hair and grave digger. What's interesting is anybody that likes any kind of motorsports, you know what I'm talking about. There's electricity in the air right now. Which one of these guys is going to the final? It's like a sprint car backing into a corner, like a motorcycle on the power side. Here we go. Boy, the drama in this building in the first final of 90 in setup, Scott. It's so interesting, Army, at the late stages of last year, you talked with Dennis Anderson, you talked with Mike Wine, they both talked a big game, said in 1990, I'm going to be tough. They were both saying that. Well, obviously, they've started out backing it up in 90. Here's Army with the one and only grave digger, Dennis Anderson. Army, he's all ears. Let's see what he's got to say. 
Well, the first final of 1990 is coming your way in just a minute. It's going to be a Ford Jersey Outlaw going against the grave digger of Dennis Anderson. You said you were going to be here. Now can you win it? Yeah, I think so, Army. I don't know. I went up, pulled up here and got ready to stop. Felt like I lost my forward gear. I don't know. I'll find out when I get back in the truck. But if not, I think I've got this race sewed up. The Grave Digger will now get ready for the Monster Smash as the crew goes to work on Dennis Anderson's classic machine. It's Digger and Outlaw in what ought to be a classic final coming up in the Monster Smash. Birmingham, Alabama, it is time for the Monster Smash between Grave Digger and Jersey Outlaw. This has become an outstanding rivalry between two colorful, outspoken drivers. Here's Chris Chapman with Mike Wine, driver of the Outlaw. Is there a problem, Mike? No, just checking a power steering box and all. Fluid's low on it again. It bounced kind of hard that time. It's going to be you and Dennis Anderson in the finals. What's it going to be? Tell me who's going to win it. Last year we got together as me and Digger in the finals. And Digger got me. And I know what I did wrong. So I'm going to use it this year and start the year off right. I'm predicting me. The last time the Outlaw and the Grave Digger got together, the drivers kind of ran into each other before the race. Let's look back. Here's what they had to say then. Well, the final race of the year is not going to cut slack for anybody. Standing with me right now, the lone hope for the Ford camps, Mike Wine. You say you're going to hammer all these Chevrolets on the final race with a Ford. I don't know if they're believing that or not. Yeah, we did all of them to beat their trucks last night. Grave Digger beat his first and tore it up. So I think he was afraid to run me in the first round last Wait a minute here. Dennis on, Anderson with the Grave Digger. Go hold ahead. on a minute. No way. There's not going to, Ford's not going to dominate tonight. It's going to be a shovel and it's going to be the Grave Digger. Takes 10 Chevrolets to even touch one Ford. He'll have his chance. We'll be coming up next round. Instead of running his mouth, let him run his truck. Grave Digger and the Outlaw. Dennis Anderson and Mike Wine. It's time for the first Monster Smash of 1990. Jersey Outlaw third, Mad Dog is fourth. Equalizer starts out at number five. Then it's King Crunch, Thunder Chicken, Clydesdale, Jesse Berge and playing for Keith, tied with the Mopar Magic ride of Gary Wiggins. So the points coming out of the chute, you see how they're developing. And next week it'll be race number two on the circuit. But right now, Dennis Anderson's got himself a win. Well, Dennis, the flag goes to you. First one in 1990. That was some kind of final. Yeah, it was. You know, I started out the, the race season last year just like this. I just hope I can continue this year because I started out strong at the beginning of the season last year and it started dying off for me, but maybe I, maybe I can start off good and, and stay, you know, stay to the top 10 or the top, top number one anyway. The most popular monster truck in the sport today. Legions of fans all over the country and they got what they wanted in round number one of the The guy who got off to the best start last week was Dennis Anderson. He's with Army Armstrong. We're standing with a man who started 1990 off the right way. First win on the World Championship Series, the grave digger of Dennis Anderson. However, Dennis, are we looking at a little deja vu? In 1989, you started the same way and it went downhill. Yeah, it did, but that's what we're going to do is we're going to forget 89. That was a tough season. Although I finished up fourth, but this year I'm looking for that points championship. I mean, I want to win it. We've got a lot more money, you know, on hand now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have about three months, you know, through the season. I'm going to change. I'm going to change trucks because we're allowed one truck change a year. And I can come out with some fresh iron. I think I can lay these boys down. Speaking of fresh iron, there's a kid out of New Jersey. Goes by the name of the outlaw, Mike Wine with the Ford Camp. No love lost here. He wants you worse than anybody. He believes this is going to be Ford's first world championship. What do you have to say about Mike Wine and the outlaw Ford? Mike wants to, he, he'd, rather, he'd rather beat me than anybody out there. He tells me that himself too, but there's not, there's not any love lost between us. You know, like I say, when he, when he gets to the line, 
I dislike him just as bad as he dislikes me. Yeah, you guys say that and you kind of smile at each other, but there's really not a lot of friendship there. There, there is a rivalry, isn't there? Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, once we get in those trucks, bud, and we're through the line, when that light goes down, that's it. You know, there's no playing. How about Steve Wilkie driving a USA One truck? He was a mechanic. He's stepping up to the driving chores. Is he going to come around and be a player this year for the national championship, or are you going to worry about him at all? Uh, I'm not going to worry about him too much. You know, he's, he's still got a lot to learn. Steve, he's, he's a decent driver now, but uh, he hasn't got that bonsai in him, I don't think, but we'll find out. Say, Wilkie's a decent driver, Wine's an okay driver. Who's the best driver on the Monster Truck Tour? I'd say I am. Well, that's it from down on the floor. We're getting ready for the second battle roll for the World Championship in 1990. Let's check with Chris Chapman. If you took a survey of who fans think is the most aggressive, wildest driver on the circuit today in TNT Monster Truck Racing, these people would tell you the grave digger. Who's the guy who wants to take that name away and build that same reputation? It's Marvin Smith and the wild hair. Earlier tonight in qualifying, when they're not supposed to be letting it all hang out, these two trucks collided. What happens? First round competition. Wild Hair and Grave Digger are eyeball to eyeball, this time to eliminate one of the other. God, it's almost like two boxers standing in the middle of the ring staring at each other. Neither one is going to back off. Believe that. Boy, you, again, you can feel the drama in this building, can't you? The electricity. Both of them powered by supercharged Chevrolet. The red lights on the Grave Digger indicate everything is 100% go. Meanwhile, the wild hair trying to make a new name for himself with a new truck. This ought to be a dandy. First round competition opens up with a sensational main event race. Wild hair against the Grave Digger on tough tracks. See how they take this hill. The good bounce is going to win it, I predict. Let's see. Oh, Anderson. Oh, look at here. Anderson stayed low and took the win. He stayed down on the deck shot, and that proved to be the winning philosophy. Dennis Anderson's grave digger almost tries to go out the end of the Charleston Civic Center. Well, that's what happened to Wild Hair a week ago. But Dennis, a very impressive win over a hard-charging Wild Hair, the same truck that was fast qualifier just one week ago. Dennis working his way over to talk to Army Armstrong about an opening round win over the wild hair. Well, Dennis, the qualifying session was super. You come right back, you draw him in the, in the first round. I, I don't, I just can't believe it. Hey, I know, neither could I, because I knew Marvin, he's out to get me. And Marvin's running good. He's got a new fiberglass body on his truck. He's running good. I knew I was going to have to run hard, so I gave it what I had. What goes through your mind as a driver on that? I mean, that is scary. You've you got 12,000 pound vehicle running 35, 40 mile hour at another man's wall. 20 minutes ago, you guys got together, you come back, you pair up again, and you go right back at it like two mean old bulldogs. Yeah, well, that's what we got to do is we got to get out there and run just as hard as we can to try to stop because that wall always wins. You won last week. You're the national points leader right now, Dennis. The position you've been in before, can this be the year where you're going to hang on and win this thing? I hope so. I really think so, you know, because we've worked on the truck a lot. You know, we didn't, we didn't have much time. You know, our points started out a lot earlier this year. We didn't have a lot of time to do things that I wanted to do, but the truck seems to be working good for us right now. Hang in there. You got the hot hand. We'll see you in the next Perfect round. Perfect right, for the superstars of monster truck racing. They're coming your way right here on Tough Tracks. And when you say superstar, you've got to start with Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. We showed him to you in depth a couple of weeks ago here on Tough Track. Now you're seeing him in action up close and personal in 1990 and his opponent, the nightlife Chevrolet of Dave Weissork. Weissork finished fifth, the national point chase in 1989, the conservative driver. Meanwhile, Anderson, the kamikaze kid, came home fourth in that points battle. Side by side, ready to go in the quarterfinals. One moves to the final four, the other goes on the trailer. Dennis Anderson won a week ago. Scott Anderson has got this thing covered. He has, he's just going so smooth the way the vehicle comes over that jump and settles on the cars. Anderson could make it two in a row. Watch the replay come up. The front wheels, they just set down on the cars. Dennis Anderson really dialed in is going to the semifinals again, hoping to make it two in a row in Charleston, West Virginia. Anderson working his way over right now to Army Armstrong to talk about that win. Ladies and gentlemen, we did receive word of 419. Dennis Anderson, that is awesome. Yeah, it is. I'll tell you what I've done, Army. I've been shooting out of this left lane all night. 
and I knew that uh, last week I qualified a little bit faster in the, in the other lane over there, so I said, I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. I lined up against Dave, and Dave doesn't always push it as hard as he can, so I gave it a try, and I think I'm going to stick in that right lane now because that's the fastest time of the night. The chassis really looks like it's working. The rear motor seems the way to be on this track because once you get over the jump, it's just like Chicago was a year ago. The front end nose is down, and man, you're going to town. Yeah, that's what you got to do is try to keep those tires down and get them pulling forward. The Digger off to a great start so far in 1990. He won last week here on Tough Tracks. He's in the semifinals already this week with maybe more to come. Four of the most awesome pieces of machinery in the world are still alive at the Charleston, West Virginia Civic Center. Chris Chapman is ready to take a look at the final four tonight in Charleston, West Virginia. It's time for semifinal racing action here in Charleston, West Virginia Civic Center. In just a moment, we're going to talk to some of the fans and see who they pick as their favorites as we head into this action. But first, let's take a look at the pairing. It's going to be the Grave Digger taking on Jerry Wiggins and Mopar Magic. In our final pairing, places Kid Rarick's Thunder Chicken against the new kid on the block, the Pony Express. Well, that'll be the final four as Mopar Magic comes out to take on Grave Digger. Now, of course, Dennis Anderson, as we told you earlier, has recently moved to North Carolina, Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Gary Wiggins, a Tar Heel from way back out of Williamson, North Carolina. The Mopar Magic Dodge against that 1951 Chevrolet panel van of Dennis Anderson. Something going on here I don't understand. Anderson quick in the show at a 419. Got everybody covered out of the right lane. He's going out of the left lane in this round. I have no idea why he made that move. But it worked. Whatever it worked. It definitely worked as Dennis Anderson's grave digger puts away Gary Wiggins and Mopar Magic. So the digger is back in the finals once again this week as he tries to start off 1990 with back-to-back -back victories on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. There you get a good look at the man behind the wheel of the awesome grave digger, Dennis Anderson. He's with Army Armstrong. Dennis Anderson going to the final second night in a row, but every one of these guys that you're running against will do anything they can to beat you. It's almost a love-hate relationship, and you're not on the love end of it by any means. No, that's right, Army. I mean, every time I line up, I know nobody's not going to cut the grave digger any slack, so i got to give it all. Does it feel good to you tonight? Yeah, man, I'm feeling good. These people in Charleston are loving every minute of it. We'll see you in that final. Great. We'll see you later. One more time, isolated grave digger. Dennis Anderson works his way into the Monster Smash final for the second week in a row here in 1990. Now, Army, get It's been an incredible night of side-by-side -side competition, and we are down to the final two in Charleston, West Virginia Civic Center. It's time for the Monster Smash. Charleston, Grave Digger have moved into the point lead 
equalizer up to number two, Awesome Kong third. 39. Gave him second quick of the evening. And at the time, it was the fastest time. So the Williamson, North Carolina driver put down the shot to beat. But then Dennis Anderson came out in the grave digger, really kind of ticked off about what happened to him last week on Tough Tracks, and he served notice right now. Anderson rolls the jump, slams the front end down, smooth run for the grave digger. Again, just like you said, he does not want to go down the tubes this week. 4.26 quick qualifying time laid down by Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. We're going to watch the Grave Diggers run again. And Army, how about the strategy for driving this course? Anderson has a completely different strategy. He literally jumps the first hill and picks the front end up and walks it onto the cars. There's not a lot of bounce and not a lot of air with the Grave Digger because of the rear end. However, as you can tell, they still got problems trying to get yeah, stopped on the big end. Every on that list has run twice so far in 1990. Run number three for Grave Digger and the Thunder Chicken begins head to head in the Charleston, West Virginia Civic Center. We've got one of the things I'm gonna be watching for, the driver of the Thunder Chicken, this truck, for some reason, always has a knack for being at the right place at the right time. Matter of fact, he went to the finals on two occasions last year. Anderson has one win under his belt this year. A little bit of a, a humiliating experience under his belt also. He does not want to go through the humility part again. Anderson is going to really try to lay a shot in the right lane. I do know Kid Rearing is not wearing the neck support that the drivers normally wear. And I know he has problems with his back that could affect his driving style. All great. Dennis Anderson opens up with a first round victory over Kid Rarick's Thunder Chicken. Army standing by with Dennis Anderson. Dennis, first round win is going to put you against the man that put you away last week. You're going to drive any different against him this week than you did last week. Yeah, well, you know, last week I, my truck stumbled on me. I turned the, the saddest time when I raced him. I'm running pretty consistent this week. I turned, I qualified a 426. I just turned a 426 again. I feel like if I run, you know, run the same, if I can run, turn another 426, I got him because I think about the best time he can do is, in the, is a 440-something. You got lane choice. Where are you going? Back in that right side where you been? Yeah, I think I'm going to stick to that right lane. I seem to pull my fastest times out of that lane. It feels kind of wild over there, but turning some good times, and I got to lay that Pony Express down before he gets carried away. We'll see you and him in the next round. Good luck. All right. Grave Digger seeks revenge against Pony Express in just a moment. But first, Army talked with Dennis Anderson of the Grave Digger about his outlook for 1990. Well, Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger are starting out 1990 just like he started off 1989, that being like gangbusters. Your national points leader after two events with one win and one second place. Dennis, what did you do different? Well, we went home, you know, over a season we had off, which we didn't have much time off. Uh, I put a smaller motor in the truck. I'm running two carburetors instead of fuel injection and it seems to make the truck stay together a lot better and that was that was the thing last year i ran hard when i ran it ran super fast but it just wasn't consistent i want to try to be consistent all through the season this year the truck behind us the truck you ran all last year you, you detuned you finally got it tweaked to where it's really working for you but we understand there's a new grave digger in the works why are you building a new truck if you finally have this one ironed out well, I feel like, uh, you know, we, we're, we're allowed one truck change through the race season. If I can come back about three months up the road here, come out with some fresh iron to beat on, I think I can I stand a lot better chance. The new truck is going to be a lot lighter thanks to Creative Glass. They've, uh, you know, they've created this fiberglass body for the Grave Digger now. We've got a real light tube frame. We're trying to work on a new suspension right now and get the truck to work a lot better. And, you know, like I say, when I come out with some new iron, you know, after three months into the season, I stand a lot better chance. Let's talk to the competitors for a minute. If you had anything to say to these competitors, and, and it is getting to be very, very competitive now, there's no one or two trucks dominating anymore, what would Dennis Anderson say to the rest of these fellas about 1990? All I can say is the guys better look out because I'm going to be hammered down all season. You know, when I come out with this new truck, hopefully we'll have everything ironed out. It's going to be shame on them. Places the Buffalo Trimmer against Bennett Clark, Pink and White, Clydesdale. Ready for the rematch. This was the Monster Smash final a week ago, but today they're in the quarterfinals, and Grave Digger has said the kid will not beat him this time. Army Armstrong, he's made no bones about it. Dennis feels like he made a mistake last week, and he's going to make up for it right now. Yeah, he will not make a mistake right now. Watch the truck, it's going to land perfect from Will down. It was close, but Grave Digger's gonna be in that next round. No room for error by
but the digger pulls it off by a heartbeat. Wow, what a race. The kid gave him all he wanted, but Dennis Anderson comes out victorious. He gets his revenge. Well, Dennis, by three hundredths of a second, you reel this kid back in, but he's not going to roll over a bit for you, is he? No, he's not. I knew he was going to gouge on him. We were talking back here in the back, and he's got it out for me. I got it out for him. You know, what can we say? It's racing. Well, he's won one, you've won one. You'll get together later in the year. We're going to let you get back to the pit area. What a super job you've done this year. You've really, really impressed a whole lot of people. Yeah, we've done some good work. I'm uh, just a little frustrated right now. I'm, I don't even know what to say. Uh, nothing to be frustrated about. You've made a lot of friends here. We're impressed with your truck. We look forward to seeing you later on on the tour. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Army. Hold on to your seats for the amazing crunch of the week. Brought to you by Micro Machines. The number one colossally collectible vehicles in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. Appropriately, Crunch of the Week, October Louisville Outlaw Digger, look at this! Dennis Anderson stands it straight up and down! The last race of 1989 for the Digger in Freedom Hall was one to remember. Army, have you ever seen a wilder ride for Dennis Anderson? When he came out of the truck, he said, that's a Charmin run. You're gonna see what he means right here. Dennis Anderson on the Crunch of the Week. That was the last time they got together head-to-head. -to -head. Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky, 1989. Here it is, 1990. The Outlaw, the new paint job, and Mike Wine says it's a new year. He's ready to go up against the Digger now in the semifinals. Well, they both leave that start line. Anderson muscles it out in the half track. All brave, Digger. Both of them talk a lot. This time, it's the Digger and Dennis Anderson backing up the word. For the third straight week, the Grave Digger has made it into the Monster Smash Final. Here he is with Armin. Well, Mike Wine told us a minute ago that you were going to be easy to get by. I think you just proved him wrong. Yeah, I know it. He's been talking a lot of trash back there in the pit, so I just had to prove it to him before his head got too big. Well, once again, it was a convincing victory for Grave Digger over Outlaw, and that means we have one more finalist to the German. is what it's all about, what they came for in Charleston, West Virginia. The crowd stands as Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger ready to do battle with Dave Wysorek and Nightlife. It's time for the Monster Smash on Tough Track. has made it to all three finals in 1990, and he's won two of them to firmly establish himself as the early points leader. It's a convincing full-length victory for the Grave Digger, who has the season point lead. But keep in mind, Digger and Outlaw have three races so far, equalizer just two, so Morris is certainly on track to try and defend that world championship. Gary Wiggins, Mopar Magic, an early surprise. Awesome Kong with just two races already in the top five, as is King Crunch with two races. Then Wysorek's Nightlife tied with 40A and the Pony Express. The Thunder Chicken of Kid Rarick and Johnny K and Buffalo Trevor rounding out that top 10. Anderson is on top early. Well, Dennis Anderson, congratulations. We just tallied it up real quick. You are the national points leader right now. Yeah, I figured I was, but you know, just like we, we were talking about last week, I started out 89 just like this. Hopefully I can hang in there for the 1990 season. We got a big purse to win. I'm getting a few sponsors behind me now, Cryer Cam, Rugged Trail, you know, for my shocks. 
creative glass for fiberglass body. We got a new truck coming out. So hopefully I'll stand a lot better chance this year. How about this white story kid? He's for real. Yeah, he is. I tell you, old Dave, you know, he's a good old sandbagger, but buddy, he'll put it on you if he gets a chance. Well, he's building a new truck too. We'll be looking forward to following both of you guys the rest of the year. Good luck and a job well done. All right, thanks, Army. That's the climax to three sensational weeks of racing. Like your basic indoor track, the final is going to be an eight-car jump. Finish line is two cars from the end. The starting line, however, the hump, the dirt hill, is going to be where they're going to win or lose it. I believe they're going to fly over all eight cars. We're going to be taking a look at qualifying highlights. Problems for Dennis Anderson. One line on the left. Dennis. a problem. We came in after introduction. I didn't even get to qualify tonight after driving 800 miles. It was kind of disappointing that a little piece like this could stop my truck, but nevertheless it did. You know, I came back into the pit here. We had a steering problem. We started ripping the cylinders apart. That wasn't it. We came back to the pump and found it. And it's so far along now that it's too late for us to even try to qualify. So we're going to be out tonight. We'll come back again next week and be stronger than ever. Let's look at the Restore Automotive Products point standing coming into this night of racing. No doubt these problems are going to hurt the Grave Digger in the point standing. Equalizer leading the battle, trying to win the world championship with the Digger sitting second. King Crunch and coming at you here on Tough Track. Army Armstrong, one of the great rivalries of 1990, about to be renewed in Memphis. It's Grave Digger against the Outlaw. Well, Dennis Anderson has always represented Chevrolet and the awesome Grave Digger with the red lights. However, this rookie driver in 1989, representing the Ford cab, developed a tremendous almost hatred for that Chevrolet they call the Grave Digger. No love lost between these two guys. Let's see who's going to have the first win of 1990. The drama comes up. We're looking for a green line. comes back, but believe me, that four is going to make him remember that whole shot before the night's over. Nonetheless, at the finish line, Dennis Anderson's grave digger gets the win. Red lights blaring in Memphis, Tennessee. Give the win to the grave digger, and Army standing by with Dennis Anderson. Well, as we go around the country, this is one of the trucks that everybody wants to see, Dennis. Looking good so far. What do you got to say? Yeah, it's looking pretty good so far, but we got a lot of tough competition here. All I can say is I got to try to knock them down. John Swan in the bottom half of the bracket. Austin Kong defeated Whiskey Business in the first round. You saw him hauled off, but we expect him back to take on USA 1. And then the final matchup, a rematch of last year's number one and two trucks. Carolina Crusher squares off with the equalizer. It's not the Monster Smash final, but this is one of the matchups they hope to see in Memphis, Tennessee. Bigfoot and Grave Digger. God, these have to be the two most popular trucks in the world. Who's going to win in Memphis? Bigfoot. Whoa, look at the Grave Digger. Wow, he almost took a piece out of the Bigfoot at the end of the run. But Andy Brass gets the victory. Dennis Anderson going all out with the Grave Digger, but a little bit too much Bigfoot at this point. Look at the end of the run. It looks like Anderson was headed right for him. But he gets it stopped before there's a collision between these two at the end of the track in Memphis, Tennessee, but not much room there at all. And he out. The superstars of monster truck racing are once again in Memphis, Tennessee, doing battle in the Mid-South Coliseum. Hi again, everyone. I'm Scott Douglas here on Tough Track. Dennis Anderson, the driver of the Grave Digger, with me as we're back for our third straight week in Memphis and ready for some more intense competition. Dennis Anderson, the big question, especially with a lot of talk and a lot of guys doing a lot of jawing last year. This year, more money than ever on the line in the TNT Point Fund. More prestige, more races. Can you win the championship? Yeah, I really think so. You know, it's just like, a, you know, last year I started out, I was running strong in the points. I started out running strong in the points this year, but who knows, you know, we got to see midway through the season. I might come out with a new truck. We're working on it right now. I'll do a truck change and, and just take the points right off of this truck and put on a new truck. But I'm going to really battle it out hard. I'm, I, want it, I want that first place this year. The championship on the line every time. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger and the rest of the TNT Monster Trucks do battle. We're looking forward to a great race in Memphis. Let's go with Army Armstrong inside. The four seconds right to get right now. Right. That's a pretty good time. It's 4.26. It kind of gets, as you mentioned a moment ago, it kind of gets overwhelmed with equalizer Bigfoot in the three. But that's a good time. Here's Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. Marvin Smith, the all-new Wild Hair. A popular truck, but the Wild Hair really hasn't been times yet. And the track really works to Anderson's likings, however, a little bit of a problem. He lost the cylinder on that run 
shot. That could really hurt. Ben coming out right now. He is in trouble. He's down to seven cylinders right now, Scott. Well, that's too bad because that's a competitive time at 4.09. Notice the chassis right here. Those front wheels settle down. This is the ideal track. Very similar to Chicago last year when Anderson dominated with his grave digger. However, you can see the problems on Dennis Anderson's grave digger. Excellent qualifying, but trouble the highway, the end. On the way to this event. The driver's just running, trying to put time and get points on it. So that's kind of a smart move. Now, speaking of move, during a qualifying run, we saw this cylinder go away. And Scott, he's completely lost one cylinder. Going to be running only on seven. So with Digger not at full power, he will still try to knock off Steve Wilkie in USA 1, one of the fastest improving drivers on the circuit. He had big shoes to fill with Rod Liftow giving up that seat in USA 1 after winning the world championship in 88, finishing third in 89. Wilkie seems to get better each and every week, and you know he gets fired up to run against the Digger. Yeah, he gets psyched up, and he doesn't seem to get better. He really is. This guy is coming in, really trying to get into some big footsteps in front of him. Of Rod Liftow. Wilkie's a good driver. Working here on the King Crunch as he comes to the line. Well, Dave said a lot of guys don't use it all the time. That's because in big arenas outdoors, so most of the courses are pretty straight. They don't really need it. But uh, that's a sound thinking on his part. Always know where that lever is and exactly what it's going to do for you or again you. All right. In this matchup, you're going to see the King Crunch. You just saw a good close view of it. And in the near lane, I always love to see this machine, the Grave Digger. Even more than the machine, I love to see the way Dennis Anderson drives. It's almost like he's got his eyes closed sometimes. I mean, it's just in total abandon. Scott Stevens of King Crunch knows that. He'll be looking out at his peripheral vision to make sure Gravedigger doesn't bounce in his lane. I mean, he really stays with the Gravedigger driver, Dennis Anderson. King Crunch, Texan Scott Stevens at the wheel. It's a little better start. Here comes the Grave Digger, and the Grave Digger up out of his lane. That's a disqualification right there. That's too bad. What a pretty machine. Boy, I hope I didn't jinx him, Paul. I didn't mean for that to happen. Grave Digger is one incredible machine to watch, and we'll miss seeing him in future competition. But I'll tell you what, that is a disqualification for sure. We don't even have to check with TNT on that. Now the red flags were flying, but nice of the Grave Digger. Gave it a little run anyway, something for the fans. Oh, absolutely. These guys are entertaining as well as competitors. And Paul, it's at times like this, the driver wishes he had some uh, flaps on the thing. He knows that he's filling off to the left-hand side if he could only ride it in air, but it's not to be. Body English doesn't do much in a monster truck. He tried to compensate immediately by turning right, but the truck has too much weight and too much momentum, and Grave Digger is out for the evening. Okay, Scott Stevens certainly isn't. Let's go to he and Pat. Right here, put him on TV every week all over America. Here he is. The red light to blaze in Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. That's the site of his brand new shop. Kill Devil Hills, the perfect name for the home of the Grave Digger. The opponent will be Thunder Chicken. Chris Chapman asked Kid Rarick, the driver of Thunder Chicken, how he feels about facing Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. Kid Rarick, not many monster truck drivers like to be in the position that you're in. Going up against Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger in first round competition. What do you think? Well, yes, he's the grave digger, and he's about the fastest out there. He's in the first in the point standings. Uh, last time I looked, I was six in the point standings, and I'm just, I'm not afraid of him. I'm just going to give it all I got, and if I lose, I lose. If I win, good. Actually, kids, the digger sits third in the season points by an equalizer in King Crunch, but we know what he's talking about, Army. They really do get fired up, and I mean they, I mean guys who haven't got the notoriety of the grave digger, they really look forward to running him head-to-head. Kind of like the old days in the gunfighter. You want to make a name for yourself, you just got to pump off one guy. He's the guy on top. In this case, Anderson and that great. Look at here. What a him up. All kind of problems down here on the stand. He blew another tire. He blew another tire. It's the second time tonight he's blown a tire. The bounce on the end of the track is giving him all kinds of problems. That could, that could cause an accident later tonight. Let's keep an eye on it. Watch the bounce. Set down right now. Now he's in trouble. Tire. You know, if he had not blown that tire out, he would have gone over. 
Scott. He blew the back right tire on. I think on this angle, Army, we'll get a better look at it. Watch for a puff of, well, air, actually, but you'll see it explode out of there. There yeah. it is. If he hadn't have blown the tire, he would have gone over there. Let the truck settle enough to keep it upright. Dennis, what happened out there? I don't know. It was a pretty wild ride, you know, right there, Dan. That came down a nosedive. Truck got crossed up a little bit, and I hit pretty hard on the right rear wheel and knocked it off the rim, so got to get the tire back on the rim for the next round. Don't be any problems doing that? I don't think so. Dennis Anderson says the digger's coming back. Watch, see how high that back wheel is, and it comes down and just explodes that tire. Scott, how would you like to have been this kid's driver education teacher in high school? <laughs> Boy, there's a question of the week. Hey, look at the help he's getting out there. Johnny K, John Kwasniewski, and Bennett Clark. Watch help. how they put the yeah. They put ether around it, right, Arm? They exploded onto the rim. They do. We don't. We're standing way, way back with a long lens on this camera. Now, the point is to kind of get it to, to mold or melt to the rim, right? Yeah, but what it also does is actually explodes the tire onto the outer rim. And then they'll, then they'll fill it with air once yeah, they get it exactly. to do that. And then that seals it right there. You can see it starting to seal up. All right, Grave Digger will be coming back. The tire is not going to cause him problems. He'll be ready to go again. See, just the two bit. red and lights, the Grave Digger and Mopar Magic. On North Carolina Showdown, Dennis Anderson, Grave Digger, now based in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, and his opponent, Gary Wiggins, the Mopar Magic from Williamson, North Carolina. This ought to be quite a matchup. Scott, if you, if you talk about a truck that's, that's really made a lot of inroads this year, it's got to be this guy right here. He teamed up with, he's run Chrysler his whole life, okay? He can't get any real help, so he has to do it out of his own pocketbook, but he goes head to head with these Chevrolet and Ford factory trucks every weekend, and he's making a good, good name for himself. I really believe in this kid. North Carolina battle right here. coming down on the nose and then I hit on the rear and hit sideways I'm knocking them off the rim so I guess I'm gonna have to put more air pressure in them for the weekend so is it you're driving you're blaming it on I guess you could say that <laughs> <laughs> a little humor from Dennis Anderson but now it's not his time when he wants to laugh a bunch he's going to get ready to go racing in the monster smash final a lot of drivers helping Anderson now that's how popular this truck is all the guys want to beat him but if they're not running they love to watch the wild action of the grave digger and i know the fans love it as well we'll see if he can make it back for the monster smash in just a minute don't you dare go away Mike Speller, the track official, that four means four minutes. Anderson is on the clock. He's got 
about four minutes to get in. But as you can see in the pit, our camera's showing it to you. Anderson will make it. Now, the folks inside don't know it yet. They're going to roar when they see him come through the door. Tracy Smart at the start line also has a clock on him as they're checking the clock. Dennis will make it, and the fans are going to go nuts when they see him come through that door. Well, the situation is he's going to take all that five minutes. He can. I, I don't look for him to come in until less than a minute. The reason he will not come in is that he's trying to get air in the tire. He just told Chris outside he's going to put more air pressure in it. That's where we are right now. It's time for the monster smash. situations like that. That was just blood and guts. Yeah, that other guy, he, he, he there's two guys out there and both of you got to do the best you can do. Uh, I knew Dennis been getting pretty wild here tonight. Every ever run he's made getting out of shape, so I was expecting it. <laughs> You're sitting here with a big smile on your face. This is just part of the game, man. And when you go to the table and sit down and play ball with these yeah. guys, it's going to be part of it. When you're out here racing side by side like that, it's just like any other motorsport, uh, things happen. You can see the tire being blown out on the equalizer at the end of the run. Dennis Anderson, man, he got way out of shape, and he's coming over right now. But let's take one more look at this thing. Anderson from this angle. Boy, that's a great shot. Our camera crew all over this thing. Both tires, Scott. Both tires on the right side and went away. Wow, you can just see Dennis Anderson just about turned equalizer over after smashing into it. Let's see what Dennis has to say. Dennis, when are you going to learn to drive that truck? I don't know, that was one wild ride. You know, I was sitting at the line army and all night long I've been building the motor up because the motor's got to stumble at it with those big carburetors I'm running and I know better and I sat there at the line, didn't bring the motor up like I wanted to and, I, and it made me look like I was sleeping at the line. So then I just killed it, tried to get, you know, trying to run after him. And that was the first time I'd run that lane all night too. Really, I should have switched over and tried that lane, but I just got in a real serious nosedive and the motor went dead on me. And, I ran over, and I guess I guess he was coming my way, and I was going his way too. But anyhow, we locked horns, and this is where we ended up. This is 1990 Renegade Monster Truck racing, isn't it? That's right. If, if you can't beat them, you gotta kill them, I guess. <laughs> that kind of is putting it bluntly. Dennis Anderson's grave digger passing into the equal. But now let's turn it over to Scott Douglas. Chris overstating the obvious. This is grave digger country. Dennis Anderson stomping ground, Roanoke, Virginia. They came to see him, and they hope to see him win. And Dennis is here to put on a show for him. Maybe that explains part of last week's final against Equalizer. Army talked with Dennis about that run in the final a week ago. An awesome ending took place in Roanoke, Virginia. As the final came down to the Grave Digger and the Equalizer and Dennis Anderson, it was literally a war out there last week. 
Yeah, it was, Army. You know, when I came to the line with uh, with David, I hadn't run that lane all night. I've been favoring the right side because I figured that was the best lane to run out of. I qualified good in it. I jumped in that left lane. I had a little problems leaving the line, and I tried to make up for it. And I got a real bad bounce. I think when I came over the hill, the front end of the truck bounced up. And it kind of more or less done a little wheelie to the cars, and it hit the back wheels and would trip the truck and throw the tail end up in the air. And I just come across the cars on the front wheels, and I nearly turned over, and I thought I was going to turn over and get equalizer, so I had to hammer into the motor to pull out the nose out to keep from turning over. And as I hammered into it, I rammed him right in the side, tore his truck up. I'd done a little bit of damage to my truck, but he kind of got the worst end of the deal. Let's talk about the damage that was done to your truck. Uh, really a lot of sheet metal damage, plus you blew a tire out. Other than that, not that high dollar type of damage. You're going to be back this week in action, but man, he's been out there hammering and nailing, trying to get his truck back together. A lot more damage to him than to you. Yeah, well, see, these, these big old heavy steel shields, you know, I, I jammed right in and I broke his... Uh, Broke his um, high dollar full over shocks and broke a few other things underneath the truck because I really hammered him hard and it pinned him to the ground because it uh, popped two tires off the rim on the other side and it jammed him down to the ground. So I pushed on him pretty hard. Indeed, the damage obvious to both trucks, but most noticeably to the world champion equalizer. Look at that side. That's on the equalizer. I don't get mad. I get even. We'll find out if that's true a little bit later. I did bring it with me, and I didn't even win a race. I told Jennifer, I said, let's go. We're going to bring it. The red hat comes with me from now on. Neat story there, and that's why the red hat's with the glide sail all the time. Well, the gray digger lining up in front of the hometown fans, but we're getting word that the digger is hurting. Chris Chapman, our pit reporter, talked to Dennis Anderson just a moment ago to find out the story of the gray digger and his problems. It is qualifying in the 13th spot. It looks like it might have played some bad luck for you. Yeah, it did. You know, I, I had to qualify in that left lane. I didn't like the left lane. I knew it was going to be a good lane to run in tonight. And came over that dirt mound and hammered the truck pretty hard, and I rung my rear axle shaft. So I still qualified pretty good, but when I come back from my first round of elimination, the truck's not going to do so well, so I'm just pulling off the front wheel. So does it look like maybe after the first round that's going to be it? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to park it and go to work on it. Army is two-wheel drive, and that's bad news. Should be good news for the Thunder Chicken. You know, the Thunder Chicken has phenomenal luck. I, I keep saying he has phenomenal luck. He goes to that line just like everybody else. It just seems like the cars are always falling in his direction. He's going to the next round. He just put away one of the toughest trucks in the country. Luck could play an important part of this sport. Well, there'll be no rematch between Equalizer and Gravedigger. They're both eliminated in the first round as Kid Rare got a shadow with Chicken, no matter the circumstances, in the record book, it's a big win for him. Get ready, you come out, you pick on one of the baddest boys in this sport, you're not afraid of anything. Right you know, Equalizer had trouble with their truck, worked on it all night long. Uh, he come up to me this morning, I had my truck all loaded up, I come just to watch the race, it's the only reason I even came. And he wants to know if I'd be able to run it for him. And we're only running two-wheel drive, and I've never been in a truck in my life. It really feels weird, you know, at first, but I'm not going to let USA 1 or anybody intimidate me. I don't care what I drive. I run it hard, and I run it the best I can. Another of the walking wounded, Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger, will race with rear-wheel drive only as he takes on Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. So while it's a wounded digger, he doesn't even get a break on the draw. He has to take on last week's winner. Uh, he's going up against a guy that he has the utmost respect for. You better respect this Carolina Crusher. He'll hammer you in a heartbeat. Crusher's building a new Crusher, getting ready to go outdoors. This can really help the Crusher. These guys kind of travel together, but does it bother Gary that Dennis has been wild lately and that he ran into Equalizer two weeks ago right here on this track? No, like I say, when that green light goes green, Another big win as he's trying to track Grave Digger down in the point. So this is a very important win for Gary Porter. And once again, Porter driving style, he goes to the air. Nobody else is doing it, but it's working for him. So from the USA one driver that brought this out started, Steve Wilkie has picked it up. And that's just throwing that index finger up in the air and saying, we're number one. Well, here's the guy that thinks number one in Roanoke, Virginia, Dennis Anderson, Grave Digger. 
but he's another of the walking wounded army, and Mad Dog is at 100%. Really, the digger probably doesn't have much of a shot here on just two-wheel drive. Got an earlier interview. Bob Breen told us he's been saving his equipment for this weekend. The third of three is when he wants to go into the winter circle. Let's see if he can do it. I believe Breen's got a hand up on this grave digger. Bobby Breen out of Missouri. Dennis Anderson out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. And the Mad Dog beats the crippled grave digger. So Bob Breen getting a huge victory for him in the point chase. And in any way you want to look at it, Digger may be banged up. But any time you can write on that scorecard, win over the grave digger, you talk about something on your resume that counts down the road. It's a big victory for the Mad Dog. We're going to look at it again. And Bob Breen with a truck that is ready to go full tilt today by one link over a beaten but still hard charging Dennis Anderson's grave digger. Army's going to get a win. Has to be Carolina Crusher right out of the chute. Here he comes, the most popular force in motorsports today. Dennis Anderson and the grave digger ready to square off with the Ford Bronco, John Moore and no problem. John Dennis Anderson must be one of the most popular trucks in the sport. He brought up there with, with the King Crunch truck with Scott Stevens set up with Bigfoot, but he's not crisp right now. He's having all kinds of problems in the engine department. It seems like a black cloud's been floating over him for about a year. He's got to get out from underneath it and start getting some points. Talk about that black cloud you saw right there in qualifying. No problem, outgunned him. John Moore would love to do it again. This one's for points. This one counts. Let's see if Moore can make it two in a row. It looks good. John Moore in the fourth. Putting the awesome grave digger in the grave in Albuquerque. Breakage once again for Dennis Anderson as he rolls the hill. And that's all. The grave digger is done for the night. Stick a fork in Dennis Anderson's efforts in Albuquerque round number one. Look at it. It just dies on him. And John Moore, and no problem in the record book. It goes down as a big, big win for that Ford Bronco as he knocks off the grave digger. Anderson now, as you can see, gets some movement into the truck and is able to back up. And we'll get a word a little later as to exactly what happened with Anderson as he'll go ahead and go over the cars. But the winner is John Moore, and Army is standing by with the driver of the no Before we go to that race, Chris Chapman is in the pits, and she is caught up with Dennis Anderson. We're going to go out to Chris and find out exactly what happened with the grave digger. You know, Dennis Anderson has really got to be down with all these fans here. There he is getting out of the truck. Chris has got him. Let's go outside Dennis right now. Dennis Anderson and the grave digger are very disappointed man right now. Brand new engine in this truck. What's going on? Well, you know, we came all the way out here up west, and the elevation's so high up here, and uh, we just put the motor together, put the injection on it, and we're far from having it right right now. So what do you think gonna have to, you're going to have to do to get it right? Well, I think we have to lean the motor out some more. The motor's running real fat, you know, it's real rich with fuel, so we've got to lean the motor out. we are trash the plugs in it now, so we have to put a new set of plugs in it, lean the motor down some, and maybe we can work it out. Good luck, and we'll let you get back to work. All right, thanks. Greg Holbrook in the World Championship truck. Here's the most popular monster truck in the world, but it is one that is just continuing to have problems. Dennis Anderson is just on a terrible streak of luck with the Grave Digger. He is at the line, and Army, he is on the five-minute clock. They're trying to get the transmission line fixed. It busted on him, started pouring transmission fluid out. He's getting a lot of help, but the question is, can he make it to the line to race Jesse Berge and playing for keeps? Well, he only has five minutes to do that. Berge says patiently on the line. You see Berge in the background. When he went to the starting line, the clock started track officials right there the problem is there's a transmission line that leaked the crew members priming the engine they spinning it over yeah he's going to make it all right Albuquerque. boy the roof on tingly coliseum just raised about three feet and then set back down as the grave digger fired it up and the fans go bananas and i'm going to tell you i don't think jesse Berkey's real happy but he's going to have to go ahead and run against the grave digger right here. And burby has got a truck that's broken, so Dennis Anderson should have a pretty easy time if the digger will run. Well, we were talking earlier about how super these fans are out here. They all want to see the grave digger. They've seen it on TV and everything. This will be the first time they get a chance to watch it crash the goal. Not a real attack from, but he'll be back. He does take... Oh, no, here we got another problem. Dennis
Dennis Anderson and a grave digger. They're having trouble shutting him down in this building all of a sudden, Scott. Anderson gets the win over a broken playing for keeps and Jesse Berge. Berge thought he might get an easy win and a few points, but Digger was able to get it started just before the five-minute mark was up, and he gets the win. Army Armstrong's with Dennis Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, you talk about drawing. You can't get any more dramatic than that. Dennis, what happened on the starting line? We blew a transmission line coming through the door, Army. When I got ready to back over the hill, I lost all my transmission pressure. We had to run, fix the line, fill it back over the fluid, but we made it. Both red lights stayed on the truck. That was an indication to me. There no doubt in your mind you were going to make it to that round. Is that the way it is? Yeah, well, you know, uh, Jesse, he was hurt. I knew, that, I knew that if I could get the truck running any kind of way, I had a win going for me. And the truck wasn't hurt. You know, I knew it just blew the line off. That's something minor. So we got her fixed up and we're ready to go. Tip of the hat to his traveling buddy, Gary Porter of the Carolina Crusher. Probably the next round, him or Digger, and they're both going to be tough trucks. We'll see you in that next round. Thank you, Army. Well, Scott Stevens teased the matchup for us. Grave Digger is out to take on Awesome Kong. Dennis Anderson from Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. And the Grave Digger panel wagon 1950 Chevy version takes on Awesome Kong, that modified Chevrolet truck out of Texas, Colleen, Texas, from the Jeff Dane stable at Steve Kane. Everybody knows the story. When you see both of those red lights on the front of the Grave Digger, He's got it on 100% skill. That's what's going to take to get past this section. Boy, the crowd, you know, you were talking, we keep talking about this crowd. These people are pumped. You can feel the electricity as both of these guys go to the line, wait for a green light. Texas versus North Carolina, Texas, hold shot. Well, there's nothing. Digger can't even get off the line. Awesome Kong, a wild run. He didn't know Digger wasn't with him, and Kane let it all hang out. But Grave Digger's mechanical problems continue, and Dennis Anderson is left at the starting line, the victory going to Awesome Kong. That brings us to this week's Nintendo Power Play. This week on the Power Play, it's the powerful leap of Steve Kane and Awesome Kong. Yes, indeed. Awesome Kong, the powerful leap at Albuquerque Singley Coliseum. We'll get one more look at it on the Nintendo Power Play. Scott, the sport's been around long enough now for everybody to have a reputation. This is one of the bad boys right this here. Power Play is brought to you by Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. The loader is hooked and pulling out Dennis Anderson's grave digger. The digger is done for the night, and once again, it's transmission problem. All the fluid is on the floor of the Coliseum. Digger goes off on the hook. Army Armstrong is going to work his way over and talk to the winner of that last round of competition, the guy who gets the victory over the grave digger, Steve Kane, the driver of the awesome Kong Chevrolet. Here's Army right now. And you can see, she ran a very competitive line right there, just behind the Clivesdale, and beating her buddy Pablo Cruz and tough enough. Well, here he is. He's been struggling of late trying to keep his equipment together. But, Army, no matter where you go, the popularity never diminishes on Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. Huge response everywhere and right here in Dallas, once again, definitely the fans' favorite. Yeah, you look up in the crowd, you see a lot of black t-shirts with Grave Digger on it. And what he's doing, Scott, is something that a lot of motorsport people do. He's made a good name for himself. He's trying to travel. He's trying to get as much mileage out of the truck as he can. That's good one way, but it's bad another way because breakage has really, really been a major problem for Anderson. A lot of people buy tickets just to watch this one truck see what kind of run Anderson's going to make. We're going to find out right now on Big D. Qualifying between the Digger, Carolina Crusher, and the Wild Hair, the old stopper front with Marvin Smith. And there, this is what we're talking about. Anderson is broke. He's dead at the line. But look at the run goes on. The Carolina Crusher going real strong. Scott, I've got a problem with something that's happening here. These guys are running right to the end of this building. I cannot believe they're running that hard on this end, but on your end, it looks like the Grave Digger is broken again. Absolutely. More problems for Dennis Anderson as he goes to look underneath to find out what the problem exactly is. I want to mention one more thing, Army, while we watch Dennis, and again, maybe we can get an indication here. It just locks up on him, it looks like. Yeah, it, it was in the drivetrain. The reason you can see the front wheel actually back, you know, turned backwards when he tried to go forward. So 
Transmission is going to kill him. Look at the times, though. These guys are getting quick. 6.09 for the crusher. He could definitely be tough before the night's over. He's second fastest. Again, though, you mentioned running out of the end of the stadium, and I want to remind everyone, we're running here in a football stadium, so these guys have been running indoors all, all winter. Now they're really back outside and running a much longer course. Still, they're getting there in a hurry. They're getting, yeah, they're getting there awfully quick, and you got to remember one thing. There's only one escape route in this building. That's the one door. You're not going to fit two monster trucks through that same door at door at the same time. That could be spooky before the night's over. We'll have one more qualifier once because the... Clydesdale easily beat last week's winner and the Wildhead. Man, oh man. Here comes Gravedigger. We go from one story to the next. Last week, Dennis Anderson could not even get started at the line. Let's see what he does today. Well, he's trying to, to get the truck ironed out. The problem he's having is consistency, and when you go into the lanes, there's three of you. One of them's Awesome Kong, the other one's Nightlife, and you're the third man. You don't need to be having problems. You need to be able to concentrate on making a good run. Anderson has not had that pleasure all year long. Something has a tendency to go away, and it might just happen again this time. Keep an eye on him. It's an old Triple A. Three side-by-side shimmies. Hey, Greg Dickens looking good. He's staying tough. He's hanging with him. Wow, Dennis Anderson with a and good strong he's having, run. Yeah, he's having trouble getting shut out. I don't know why they're having so many problems getting these trucks stopped, Scott. Hey, the fans at Texas Stadium are rocking and rolling, and they love the grave digger. Dennis Anderson put down a shot. Now, he and Nightlife crossed the finish line together. Let's see the times. So you can see Nightlife got in by 6 100, but that's a good qualifying time for Dennis Anderson. Hey, the grave digger may be ready to come out and go after these guys today. You get thrown off, you get right back on. That's exactly what he's doing. But Dennis Anderson won't make it. Here's Chris Chapman with the grave digger. Dennis, what happened out there? I don't know. We got ready to run, and we sat there and messed around the line so long, I couldn't get the truck cranked, but something was wrong with it before I even went in the building. I ain't had nothing but tough luck all weekend. I'm getting fed up now. You know, that's it. Well, he disgusted Dennis Anderson. Tell you, no words tell the story there, don't they, Scott? Absolutely, and the digger's done for the night. Master of this. You see the time, and that's a good time for no problem at 41 seconds flat. Here's the grave digger, Dennis Anderson, out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Notice something that is not on the truck, Scott. The front headlights. He is notorious. When he turns the lights on, he's on 100%. There must be something wrong with the truck that we're not aware of. He goes up against the outlaw, Chevrolet versus Ford. We're going to learn something right here. Mike Wine and the outlaw from Pensacola, New Jersey. Digger gets a good jump out of the hole. Right now, believe it or not, it's almost an even race. Digger works the inside. Now watch Wine come out of the top of the screen. Wine will be working his short car. Oh, look at the air. And they're only, oh, we've got problems. Great Digger scatters all over the track. They're spreading away everywhere. He's trying to shut it down. Meanwhile, Wine's working the inside. Rappel's a good turn. All kinds of stuff flying out from underneath the Grave Digger. It's the outlaw now coming around. Digger's still rolling, obviously a little lighter. Yeah, but listen to the board, people! Oh, what a qualifying run! The board people were really getting behind White, and he has problems! Both trucks suffer tremendous amounts of damage, and they're only qualifying! Man, oh man, the Grave Digger actually out-qualified the outlaw at 41.82. Let's look at it again. Watch the stuff! And I mean, I don't know what else to call it because several different parts come flying out from under the digger. Wow. What that is, the safety shields were coming out from underneath it. They served their purpose. They kept everything contained under the truck. Dennis Anderson will now survey the damage looking underneath his great digger monster truck. Obviously, more problems for the digger. It's been a year of breakage, and it continues in Louisville, Kentucky. Chris Chapman's in the pit, and I understand now working her way over to talk with Dennis Anderson. Let's go down there now. Dennis Anderson, obviously, uh, no front drive staff. We broke a mid plate that the transfer case bolts to. You know, in qualifying, the, the ramps were really kind of steep. And, uh, I, you know, got a right much air, came down on one side, it crammed the shaft back into the case, and it broke the mid plate on the transfer case and uh, broke the front drive shaft out of it. Do you believe it's a track? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's like we're going to run fast. We kind of need some mellow ramps. We can still get air 
that, that track right there, if I really would have hammered the truck, I would have skied it out and broke it in two, probably. Are you going to be able to come back? That's the big question. I don't think so. We broke the rear tie rod in, too, so we're out of it, as usual. And here comes the one they came to see of the DNT Monster Trucks. They call him the most popular truck in the world, and there's no doubt about it. Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Certainly, Dennis Anderson has been having his share of rough luck on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge, and this figure eight course was rough on him a week ago. Chris Chapman talked to him about the course earlier. Well, you know, we ran this track here last year. It's a pretty fun track. I like it. The thing of it is, if you, if you take off on the inside lane, you think you're way ahead of the other guy, but the lane changes and it swaps around. If you get out of the truck in him, you let out of it because you think you're so far ahead, and all of a sudden they zoom by you. So you got to stay after it pretty good. But it's a real neat track, and I like it as long because you don't have to take off hard with the truck and worry about ripping something out, taking off. And you got a lot of, you know, you got a lot of catching up room. You know, you just it's a it's going to be a fun track. You were having some problems down in Dallas. Do you think that you've corrected those? And what type of different adjustments have you made on the digger for this track? Well, see, just like the, the course in Dallas, it was kind of short, and we had to come off the line real hard. We are on some real sticky clay. The truck bit real hard and stripped the gearbox out. Out here, I don't have to worry about taking off, but so hard, you know, because, like I say, once the truck gets ahead of you, you got enough room to run him down. Very interesting thoughts from Dennis Anderson about running this figure eight course at Louisville Motor Speedway. And I tell you, he's ready to go, and he makes a great point. One of the few places that they take off on asphalt, at least so far this year, because they've been inside so much, they've been running on dirt and clay. Well, and also, he doesn't have to abuse the truck. He just made reference to inside and outside stuff. Stevens runs the outside lane with the King Crunch truck lifting the front wheel, you notice. He's going hard. He'll go to the short side for the second half. Gray Digger is not really attacking this track. I think he's just trying to stay alive to get into the first round, Scott Douglas. I think you're absolutely right. After the break, it's last week. Who can blame him? The Auto Value King Crunch solidly in front. Now, a Dennis Anderson that we're used to is going to really hit it hard here. But if he's watching and just trying to get into that first round and playing it smart, he may just play it conservatively and get the run finished. you got to remember, they've had a week to think it over. Anderson has thought long and hard. He will be there in the first round. He's going to make a run this week around. He saved the truck some, safely qualified. Auto Value King Crunch with a better time. But Dennis Anderson should be primed and ready to go in the first round. And the times look considerably quicker from a week ago because 40 2 6, six wasn't bad last week, but Great Digger didn't get after it, and Crunch is well. The superstars of monster truck racing are lining up in Louisville, Kentucky for first round competition, and it is the Grave Digger ready to do battle with the defending world championship truck, the Equalizer, and its new driver, Greg Holbrook. Man, oh man, this ought to be a dandy. Dennis Anderson has got to be kind of in a quandary right now. How hard does he go in the truck? Every time he's gone hard lately, he's hurt himself, but it's not like him to not give it everything he's got. Scott, I tell you what, I am not looking for a hard run. I'm sorry, I know that's not what you want to see, but the Grave Digger is not a, there you go, exactly. He's tied. That's not a hard run, he's just tied. Meanwhile, Holbrook is trying to get what we were talking about earlier, time in the seat. Every run, he learns something. Look at this. He attacks the track, comes over, keeps it close to the car. Now watch it, he'll really start to work on a flat track. Meanwhile, Anderson and the Grave Digger motor in through. They might be at the X. They might be at the intersection. This could, get, yeah, this could get spectacular. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, great figure lets off of it. Equalizer finishes the run. When well, you talk about figure eight racing, what makes a figure eight stock car race is cars coming at each other in the X, but it wasn't designed for monsters to do that. That would have made Andy Bertree's world renowned if it had the first monster truck figure eight race. Collision, yeah, man. All right, here we go around. Dennis Anderson, the Grave Digger, just doesn't seem to have it. He'll come off the turn to complete the run. Hey, he's picking up RPMs. Oh, he's going to show off. Sell him some T-shirts right there. Uh, the piece is coming out from underneath it. Stuff flying apart. Like we say, Anderson has one truck only. He's trying to do, I believe, too many things with that one truck, and it's costing him in points. That may cost him next week because it looked like things were flying out from underneath of it again. He puts out a great show here at the end, but what did he do to his truck? He gained nothing by this except putting on a show, and it looks like he cost himself a lot. We'll find out how much it cost him. Chris Chapman has got him in the pits. Chris? Dennis, let me ask you this. It's the same dark cloud that's following Bennett Clark around following you. I think so. I think my cloud is following Bennett. 
What in the world happened this time? Well, I think when I come off the line, I came off kind of hard and it rung a rear axle. So I just eased off up until the end of the course. I just skied it out. I had to go for one more air ride before I put it on the trailer. Yeah, you did. We noticed that. Why did you do that? Well, I've done it for the fans, really. I mean, it was really a, a pretty bum run, and I figured that if I had my moment built up, I could get some good air out of it, and that's what they're here to see. Dennis Anderson, always the true sport. Good luck to you, and the race is coming up in Richmond. All right, thanks. You know, if I can make one point off what he said, that is why Dennis Anderson is so popular, despite the fact that lately he hasn't been winning that much. He hasn't lost much popularity, and that's because he's still, if he's not going to win, he is going to entertain his fans. And they buy T-shirts and hats with graves there going, that's what he calls a T-shirt run. It's all over with. There he is, the grave digger from Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Certainly the most popular monster truck in the world. But Army Armstrong this year, not necessarily the most successful. He has struggled and struggled badly on our most recent program. You know, in the interview, I didn't know why Chorik, he mentioned the word air out the truck. The grave digger airs his out just coming out of the trailer. That guy just goes hard all the time. This could literally be a very wild run. You don't know what to look out for with Anderson. You got to remember. The engine and the grave diggers to the rear of the truck. The engine and the wild hair to the front. So you've got two different theories about what's going to work. And neither truck is known for going real straight. This could be a rocket ride for somebody right here. Coming over the grave digger with an early shot squarely, but straightens up and gets a convincing victory over Starvin Marvin Smith. The wild hair way off course as Marvin Smith finally it would be dq'd officially but it didn't matter because gravedigger had put him away army we're going to take a look at it one more time i guess what you were saying earlier is gravedigger needs to kind of make sure his equipment stays longer than one round that's exactly right scott he's got to stay alive to go to the winter circle army it's a situation where maybe dennis just needs to be a little smarter a little easier on that equipment army's going to talk to dennis anderson right now about that run dennis an awfully wild run you're notorious for making those wild, wild shots. This seems like it would not be the track for you, but you look like you're just at home out there. Well, really, I'm not running a truck hard at all. You know, I'm coming off the line in second, and I slip it right in drive, and I just got a, I'm pushing the throttle down about a little over uh, a half inch. I'm just holding it right there and trying to ride the course out. It's a pretty, it's a pretty rough track. You know, we haven't even powered into it yet, and if I can make it last to the finals, if that's what it takes, then I'll do it in the finals. Let me ask you a question. This is the first time I've had a chance to ask you this question this year because it's going into the second round and you're still involved in this thing. Are we looking at a new Dennis Anderson? Are we, we thinking a little bit before we go to the line? Because it doesn't look like you got it on full kill. Well, yeah, I'm thinking a little bit, you know, but on this course here, it looks like everybody's running pretty easy. I looked at the qualifying times and how long this course is, and I thought it was some pretty slow times, you know, so all I want to do is try to stay ahead of the next guy. That completes the first round on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Coming up next, the mean mistreater prepares to touch the head. Who will drive over? Mike Wine always in attack. Here's another guy who's always got it on attack. Dennis Anderson, the grave digger to take on Kid Rarick's Thunder Chicken. When Dennis Anderson pulled onto the track, you could feel the electricity go through the crowd. These people in Richmond, Virginia, they want to see one of the patented bonsai grave digger runs. The red lights tell you it's 100%. Look out. Watch it for it to go green in the middle. There it is. We're underway. Both of them taking it easy off the starting line. Here we go. Grave digger. Dennis Anderson pulls it out with a big win over the Thunder Chicken, and the equipment looks okay. God, can you feel the electricity? He's got this crowd pumped up. And I'll tell you, he's got us pumped up because he's going to make it to the semifinal round. The equipment is holding up, and the Grave Digger is going full tilt. Here's Army and Dennis. Dennis is going to be short and sweet. These guys have been laughing at you all year long, saying you lost a handle on it. I don't believe that's the case tonight. No, well, that's what I'm trying to do is I'm saving the truck. I did push a little bit harder that time because, oh, a uh, kid there with uh, Thunder Chicken, he just loves to bury me if he can, you know, so we've always had a little grudge going from three years back, so I don't want him to get an edge on me. What about the next round? What's the observation I made? Everybody that won this round came out of the right lane. Now, y'all can't do that next time. Somebody's going to have to go someplace different. Will that affect your driving style? Uh, well, it could, but, you know, I'm just going to give it the best shot in the left lane. I feel like the right lane is the best lane to shoot out of, but 
If not, I don't think it's going to be that He's much. not on the trailer yet. Greg Holbrook will be back in the Monster Smash final. Also not on the trailer yet, the Grave Digger, Dennis Anderson. He gets ready to go up against Nightlife, and today the equipment is holding up. But earlier, Army Armstrong talked with Dennis Anderson about progress on his new truck. Hey, Dennis, this is your time of the year, really. You get outside, you get to really leg that big motor. But where's all the emphasis going to be? You going to try to put time into this truck, or are you going for the new truck? Well, really, I've got to do both. It's hard trying to keep this truck together. The truck is just is so heavy, really, and the suspension's not really soft enough on it. The new truck is four link, and it takes a lot more, you know, a lot more work and, and time involved in the new truck. But it's just hard. It's, it's hard to do it, you know, trying to run this truck and, and get the new one going too. So we're just gonna keep battling at it, at it, you know, and hopefully in eight weeks the the new truck will be ready for some testing. You said just a moment ago in the conversation with me, it almost sounded like you were going to concede and be happy to get in the top five. This time last year, you were hunting and pecking and, and clawing your way trying to get into the number one spot. Are we looking at a milder dentist this year? Are you going to settle for the top five? Is the kill not there to go over for number one? I don't know. It's kind of there. You know, I stand here and say that, that I'm going to take it easy on the truck and everything, but once I get up there and I know somebody's going to run hard, it's always a different story when the light turns green. The light's about to turn green as Anderson on the left of your screen battles Nightlife. Problems for White Zorin. And it's all Grave Digger. Grave Digger made it look smooth. This final we've got coming up got to be one of the best races of the year. The kid's going after the red light bandit in the final. And Equalizer has loved the right lane as they come toward us. Anderson has loved the left lane as they come toward us. And they'll each get the lane they want in the Monster Smash final. Look at why Sorek's problems right off the bat. Now he he had some chassis bounce, but Anderson, and it amazes me how smooth. Look at bounce, stays level, settles down for him. If he can lay a run down like that, he can win this thing. But like we say, the kid from the Volunteer State's going to try to nail him. You're right. He's got to dethrone the world champion to get the win. When we come back, Equalizer and Grave Digger, the Grave Digger, Digger monster. against the world champion Equalizer. Cinderella story it took place in Richmond Virginia tonight Dennis Anderson bad luck maybe it's over but when you turn around to good luck wow you couldn't have handpicked a better place yeah you know army I've had pretty good luck the last uh, you know last two years out here and uh, I just try to keep my cool here you know I got a lot of mud bog fans the guys has known me from mud bogging years ago and my hometown mom dad my wife and kids everybody in the stands and they really want me to win you know and I want to win too but you know we pulled it off and made it to the finals and I really couldn't do it without trower cams, TCI torque converters, uh, creative glass for fiberglass body parts, and M30 hand cleaner. You know, it's really amazing. It takes a lot of people to make these teams work. And believe me, a bunch of people are on your team tonight. Congratulations, Dennis. A well-deserved win. All right. Thanks a lot, Army. It's been a while, and you know it's got to be. as we get ready, the story has to be the return of the Gravedigger, the championship form. Army Armstrong is with Dennis Anderson. Well, thanks, Kyle. We're standing with the man of the hour in Richmond, Virginia. Last week's winner, Dennis Anderson. And Dennis, last week you looked like the Dennis Anderson Gravedigger of old. Yeah, we came out, and, uh, you know, I, I drove a little different style. It was pretty good course for me on stuff to 
course was a little narrow and we had those walls to worry about, but I laid down some good straight passes and that's what it took to win. Let's talk about those walls. The walls at this track, the only track where you run where it's such confined walls, okay? You only got like five or six feet outside of the cars. That intimidates a lot of the drivers. However, you who are known as one of the most wild drivers in the sport didn't seem to bother at all. You went straight as an arrow. Yeah, well, you know, I, I tried a few things in qualifying, and it, and it worked pretty much. So I just, uh, you know, I raced the rest of the rest of the night like that, and it worked for me. And you know, the the past two years here, every year I jumped this wall, and and the wall will do some damage to the truck. And I wanted to go away as a as a winner and stay off that wall. Well, in a few minutes, we're going to see if Dennis Anderson, the Grave Digger, can make it two in a row from his hometown, Richmond, Virginia. Now let's check with Chris Chapman to see what else we're going to be seeing today. We are really looking forward to the first pull of the season, point pull, that is, on the TNT All-American Pulling Series for 1990. Well, back at Richmond, ready to get going here with the side-by-side -side racing. Before we do, one more qualifier, and it'll be last week's winner, Army Armstrong. The Grave Digger needs to beat seven seconds flat to beat fast qualifier. The equalizer currently has the fast time as we're picking it up with the final qualifying run of the day. It's the Digger. Anderson came out, and you noticed a moment ago, he was fixing himself up for a real strong run. We got a problem down here, man. Anderson's trying to bring it back. Hold oh, on to it. Those walls, those walls, I tell you. He says he's not afraid of them, but I guarantee you, he is definitely aware they exist, Scott. Dennis Anderson has got a problem. Mike Speller, the TNT official outside the truck, was pointing to him. It appears a drive shaft problem for the grave digger as Dennis Anderson, and now we get the time, actually records the fast time of the day, but you see parts flying from underneath, and a drive shaft is going to really put him in trouble. He has rear-wheel drive only. I believe he's going to come back for elimination, but the replay show you the front end took such a beating. But look at the driver. He's taking a tremendous amount of abuse up there. That's a tough break for Anderson. So the time for Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger is the fast qualifying time at 6.79, but that's probably the fastest he'll go tonight as he busts the drive shaft on the run. So the old Jake seems to be back with the Grave Digger after his great, great win a week ago on the show here on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge in Richmond. But today, we don't expect him to go all the way because a broken drive shaft will have him racing in two-wheel drive only against the very strong truck, Dave Weissorek's Nightlife Chevrolet. Scott, the broken drive shaft creates a unique problem for Anderson. A dangerous situation arises because if he really goes after it like he's normally in his driving style, does not have the front wheel to pull a truck out of trouble, he's going to be in a whole lot of problems. Anderson's using his hand wide, so he's going to the next round. And I know Dennis Anderson's got to be a little bit sick. This is about as close as we get to his hometown, but that was a driver smart run. Dennis Anderson doing all he could do and getting some valuable points by coming out to make the run, but obviously not able to give a serious challenge to Dave Wysorek's nightlife Chevrolet. So Wysorek will move in to the quarterfinal round, and Anderson is probably done unless he can come back in one of the fast loser opportunities that will present itself in the next round. One more look at it as Dennis Anderson on the left-hand side of your screen, never able to really challenge the nightlife run. Let's go to Chris Chapman. It's probably a little disappointing after such a great performance last week here in Richmond. Yeah, I am. You know, we ran real hard uh, last week and uh, won in the finals and didn't have any problems with the truck. We knocked one tire off the rim, but that wasn't any big deal. We got it repaired and we were ready to go. And uh, this week, you know, I come out and qualify. I had the fastest qualifying time. I uh, twisted the front shaft. Uh, we couldn't get a shaft back in it in time before I had to run the next round and I come off the line and I got a little crossed up and I just couldn't do anything with it. Considering running in two-wheel drive, is that about what you expected to do? Yeah, I didn't, I expected to do a little bit better than that, but uh, I really didn't want to run the truck too hard because if I'd come down on a nosedive, you can get in, you can get in some serious trouble without a front drive shaft. Well, maybe we'll see you as a fast loser. All right, good deal. The Thunder Chick Man, he's going to be on a skating rink if he tries to do it with a slick tire or racing slick, if you will, but who knows, maybe he's got something that'll grab that dirt and pull it. I'll bet when we get back there, though, there's a tire change for Carpenter. We're going to come right now and look at qualifying highlights of the action from the Wood County Fairgrounds in Bowling Green. And Army Armstrong, we've got to show the run of Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger, a good run, but a familiar story. Well, the same old story, like you were saying, he lays down that bonsai shot and then something goes away. He's trying to find a weak link on the truck, and there's nothing consistent. You know, one time it'll be the rear suspension and the front suspension, the engine. It was a shame, but boy, 
if you bought a ticket to this one, this is a good qualifying. Look at this, side by side. They're making a race out of it. Anderson holding a big win, but look at the smoke coming out of the back. That means only one thing. Grave Digger goes in the box. Driveline problems eliminate him for the night. Excellent qualifying run of 8.06 seconds, but that was the only shot that Dennis Anderson was able to lay down on this date in Bowling Green, Ohio, Wood County Fairgrounds. Watching it again, you'll get Digger on the right side of the screen, Equalizer on the left, a good steady run for the Equalizer and Greg Holbrook. But again, Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger clearly faster, but will not come back. A familiar story. Let's find out exactly what happened to Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. Chris Chapman working her way over right now, and I'm sure Dennis not going to be pleased, but again, he's out of the competition. Hey, Dennis, what seemed to be the problem out there? Mm, I don't know. I think when I came up and I hit that second pile of cars, I got in the throttle, and I think I might have rung the uh, input shaft in the transmission. Is this going to be anything you can fix? No, I won't be able to come back and race tonight. We've got to replace the transmission. We have too many safety shields and stuff to remove from the truck, and it could be a torque converter, too. We don't know until we tear into it. We're going to try, though. We're going to tear it apart. It could be something in the valve body. We don't know yet. When's this bad look going to end for you? I don't know. I think this is some fatigue from uh, Richmond. You know, I found a couple other things that... Uh, you know, from Richmond when we got back to the shop that it, it was cracked up and broke up, you know, and this is one thing that we must have missed. So the great Miss Anderson brings it out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, and he'll take on Dave Wysorek's nightlife Chevrolet from Grand Island, Nebraska. The digger has been well documented, had a lot of problems keeping her running in 1990, qualified pretty well, and he's got the red lights on, that normally means he's ready to go 100%. You're going to be looking at two styles of driving. Finesse is going to come out of the lane closer to the camera. The guy you're looking at there, he goes about it like a bull in a china closet. He's going to mash the motor. If it stays together, it'll stay together. If it doesn't, you're going to see one super run. Side by side off the first one, Scott, what does it look like? Gray Digger's going to pull it on the second one. Dennis Anderson looking strong, gets the win. Some smoke out of the back, but I didn't see any parts flying out. Dennis Anderson's your winner as he gets the victory in the Grave Digger. We're going to get a look at it one more time, and let's get an isolated view right here, Army, of the Grave Digger run. One of the things you notice about the Grave Digger, you got to remember, this truck is different because the engine sits behind the driver. It flies different. It lands different. Right now, the truck looks like he's got the hot setup. Let's see if he can move to the next round. Grave Digger gets that first round victory. Here's Army with Dennis Anderson. Dennis, in order to get to the final, you got to get through the first couple of rounds. I believe we're looking at a new Dennis Anderson tonight. You thinking different? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to save the truck until we get running, you know, running against some fast trucks. And uh, I watched Dave in, uh, in qualifying. And I watched him some uh, the day before. And, you know, he's, he's running good and consistent. But I don't know, in qualifying, I think he had a little bit too much fuel. So I, I didn't figure he was going to give me too hard of a, a run there. How about your truck specifically? You've been having some problems with it. The truck sounds great tonight. It looks great. You know, is this going to be the night for you? I don't know. I hope so. It needs to be. Dennis Anderson. And by the way, we're going to look at the points because that was an important run in terms of position for Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger getting a head-to-head -head victory over Dave Wysork's Nightlife Chevrolet. I'll show you what we mean in just a moment, but first let's check on the current TNT. Yeah, John's running real good. Not, you know, I'd like to see him win the whole thing tonight. Well, very candidly put by Scott Stevens, he says he didn't sell John Moore short. He just got beat. Yeah, well, that's the name of the game. You know, John Moore in his interview with me said he's going to live in that right lane. You can also die in that right lane if you don't stay on your toes in this sport. You know, if if we decided just to sell some tickets tonight, Army, I think we've got to pack the house just for this one race. Grave Digger against Bigfoot. I know we could, because I'm backing about 20 feet away from where I normally stand. I know what's going to come down the pike. These guys are going to go after each other like two old street fighters, but John Pyatt jumps out on Anderson. Whoa, Bigfoot. He hammered him. John Pyatt puts the Grave Digger on the trailer, and he does it with no doubt remaining. No, he, he literally manhandled him from the word go. That may be the best run I've seen John Pyatt lay down at Bigfoot, and Grave Digger just never got it going. You know, Pyatt is a, he's not new to the national touring sport. Did you know for two years he was a top amateur BMX bicycle rider in America? Then he went to work for Bob Chandler driving Bigfoot. This kid has been around. He does have a resume. Great run for John Pyatt. Army Armstrong's going to talk to him. 
John, you and the Bigfoot crew are back into this thing through the break rule, the quick losing rule, but you can still win it. Is that still in your mind? Yeah, hopefully uh, we finally got the thing figured out. It seemed like it ran really well that last race, and hopefully poor Bigfoot will go all the way to the end. What did you figure out? Uh, we regen it a little bit. It's getting cooler as the night goes on. I think that might have been stumping us. I, I don't know for sure, but I think we got it figured out. Well, we're down to four, and you're one of them. We'll see you in the next round. Okay, thank you, Army. Well, Army, I'll tell you, John really looked fired up. Now, now, as we look at the Grave Digger on the ISO, there's no question it sound good. You can see some smoke coming out, some steam coming out of one of those back exhausts. Obviously, some problems. Chris Chapman's over with Dennis Anderson, and the engine just didn't sound right. Chris, what was Dennis' problem? Dennis sounded like he had some engine problems coming off the line. Yeah, I did. I don't know. I think we might have uh, thrown a push rod off, or it could be a couple bad plugs in it. I noticed when I fired up to pull it to the line, the motor had two dead cylinders, but it was too late to try to do anything about it then. You know, after my run before that, I came back into the pit. Everything sounded good. We just fired the motor up, and it was it was weak on two cylinders, but like I say, it was too late to do anything, so I had to give it all I had anyway. That's a strong indication. A jeans truck, two of the most popular toy models, are now about to race with the big boys doing the job. Yeah, you can buy these, put them on the Christmas tree. Before the year's over, they got 17 monster trucks that all the kids in America are going to get a chance to have. But right now, who's going to win this round? We're going to find out real quick. Anderson, I believe, is in the good lane. However, the kid out of Missouri is trying to make a name for himself. He can do it in one fell swoop right here in Myrtle Beach. Kurt Fisher in the micro machine. Dennis Anderson, the grave digger. Here they come, Army. Fisher, Fisher, Fisher. Maybe the biggest win yet for the new driver of the Micro Machines, Kurt Fisher. The second major upset of the night. And there was nothing wrong with the Grave Digger. The Micro Machines just beat him. Army, this has got a different suspension from the Bigfoot truck and the Equalizer truck. Everybody's playing the game, trying to figure out how to do it. They come up with a new shock absorber that's used exclusively of off-road racing. I tell you, those shocks are working for Fisher. He just put a big the yeah, the suspension was the difference. Watch Grave Digger on the second set of cars get a little sideways. I think that's what cost him. Here they come. Now watch Dennis. He had to come back. See, he got thrown a little sideways, and that gives the victory to the Micro Machines and Kurt Fisher. Army Armstrong is going to pass a couple of weeks on truck tracks. You have seen this truck really rejuvenated, and the old warrior, King Kong, has been as strong as anybody the last few weeks. His opponent is supposed to be this truck, the Carolina Crusher, but he is on the clock. Now, the clock in monster truck racing is a five-minute clock. That's how much time he has to get to the line. In the meantime, let's go to Chris Chapman with Dennis Anderson. Dennis, I you and the Micro Machines are going to get together there at the end of the track. Yeah, it was pretty close. This is a, little, this is a pretty wild little track here. You know, tapers down. So, you know, I, I just don't like these close guard rails. That's why the, I think the, the inside lane was a better lane, and I had lane choice, but I let Micro Machine get it. But I don't like running between those two walls there. You know, that's why I chose the outside lane, and which I got a little off course there, and I'm glad I picked that lane now. Have nothing to be ashamed of. We just heard that Micro Machines has the fastest time of the evening. Yeah, he's fast. I mean, it's, it's a new design, and I knew that he was going to kill it because he wants to put me away, because if he puts me away, you know, that guy, he's, he's got it then. You know, if my truck doesn't break and I can get a good hard run and he beats me, he's doing something. We'll probably see you back as a fast loser. Good luck. All right, thanks. Chris is right. We'll have three fast losers coming we'll back a little bit later. Here. here we go. You talk about two big fast dogs. It's the Grave Digger and King Kong. Stand up time in Myrtle Beach. The Grave Digger rolls out with both headlights. Scott, he's told us many times when both the red lights are on, I'm like the old red light bandit. I'm going to hammer you hard on the wall. Who's he going up on the wall with? The kid out of Texas. The truck he's comfortable with. This could be one of the best runs of the year. Both drivers ready to go. Side by side over the first go. Chris Chapman found out about must have worked because he looks super strong and Kong laid down a great shot. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger just beat him. Wow. That was one of the best side-by-side. -side. Replays coming up, we understand. Play side-by-side. A little bit of blue smoke out of Kong. At this point, they both pull the trigger. He just jumped further through the air to take that win, Scott. Yeah, I don't know. If that track's a little bit longer, Kong might have won the race. 
but when they crossed the finish line, Dennis Anderson's Gravedigger still had about a wheel length victory as Anderson in front of a big crowd at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. There you see the margin of victory for Dennis Anderson. It's less than a wheel. Dennis Anderson, the word we get, you take the win by one red headlight. <laughs> I'm glad of that. You know, we went back in the pit. Uh, I looked at his time and looked at my time. And I told my teammate there, Kim, I said, uh, I said, I think if I lean the motor five points, put a fresh set of plugs in it, we can put him out. We got the power to the ground all right, but in that run right there, I just sheared the back drive shaft in it. So do you have another drive shaft to get back in this thing? Yeah, I've got another drive shaft, but I don't know if we can change it fast enough. You know, we don't have U-joint set up in it and everything like that. And the, uh, the safety shields is a big deal. You know, we have to have them on it. That's right Gary Cook and Greg Hall. With the walking wounded, it looks like. Indeed, it'll be Micro Machines coming out against Gravedigger. Again, that return of Bigfoot 8 is just two weeks away. Make sure you're being here on Tough Tracks. You can't miss it. Look at this. Dennis Anderson with a smile on his face. Army, he hasn't had a lot of smiles in 1990. It's been a rough year, but the digger is fired. The crowd loves it, and he and Micro Machines are going to go head to head. Right now, he's rolling around. We're keeping out here. Everybody, we've never had such disarray at an event this year. Upsets, lane choice, everything. It's just a weird night, and that's the kind of night that favors the grave digger. If you remember historically, when everybody else is having problems, this guy's grinning. Now, we understand the digger's repairs are 100%, but the micro machine's axle is not fixed. Digger has the big advantage here. He doesn't have his red lights on, but I, they're telling us the drive shaft should be ready to go, but micro machine's is just out here for points. Good. Like I said earlier, it's amazing how when everybody else seems to be having problems, all the luck falls towards the grave digger. Look at Anderson. Good run. Not a killer run, but a good run. Good enough to get him into the next round without hurting anything. So he'll go to the next round basically 100%, Scott. You know what the next round is? The Monster Smash final against the Equalizer. The Digger and Equalizer, both beaten in the first round, come back through the fast loser rule, and one of those two trucks is going to take home the championship in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. On the replay, Micro Machine was broken and just came out to give it his best shot. Well, like you just explained to the people at home, it's not over till it's over, but we're almost to the final. Blue Chevy, black Chevy. And it's going to be a black and blue final, you might say, a real street fight. Hey, the Micro Machine looked awfully, awfully good tonight before the problems. That truck's going to be a player as time goes on. Let's go to Chris Chapman and get an update on the truck. Kurt Fisher. Grave Digger lost in the first round, but he's coming back to meet the equalizer in the Monster Smash Final. Here's our meet with Dennis Anderson. Dennis Anderson, you and the equalizer in the final. Yeah, I like that. Why do you like it? Well, the truck's running good right now. Got a little bit of water spewing out of it, but that's the way it likes it. We went back and uh, fixed the drive shaft. You know, I rung a drive shaft around before. We got put on the clock, we made it. We tapped him out, so now I'm ready for the equalizer. This is the Grave Digger and the equalizer in the Monster Chevrolet is up in front of the crowd and a lot of folks look at the 
Young man who may be our next world champion driver because Greg Holbrook is increasing that lead over Bigfoot in the points chase. You know, it's really an interesting all-American story about Gary Cook teaming up with this young kid to win a world championship. Hey, it can only happen in America, and it might just happen in the Monster Truck World Championship point chase. The equalizer, the beautiful blue truck out of Springfield, Tennessee. There's Dennis Anderson, very unhappy about what happened to his North Carolina-based great bigger truck because it couldn't go in the final. Chris Chapman is headed over right now to where Dennis is getting out of the truck. Let's go to Chris now. Chris? Dennis, what in the world happened out there? Now, I, right think I, I think I stripped a gear in the transfer case, and I come off the line super hard, and uh, truck's pretty heavy, you know, and I got a strong motor in it, and those transfer cases and ISOs just don't like to hang with it all the time. What went through your mind when that light turned green and the equalizer took off? Well, I was just pushing the pedal to the wood, you know, and what can I say? The truck broke. Dennis Anderson and the Dennis Anderson and all the other superstars of Monster Truck Racing. The digger coming out right now. We're going to look at his qualifying run and in typical Dennis Anderson, Grave Digger Fashion Army, just tell people to kind of grab the edge of their seat because he's going to lay us down a bonsai shot here. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to. It's like running down a hill. The further you go, the faster you get, the wilder you get. Anderson rolls out. Everybody knows something could happen. Slow start. Watch the back end, though. Here he comes. Now, he's getting it. Pull the trigger. Look at this. Trying to throttle out. Brings him around. Almost ended up on the guardrail. If you weren't with us last week when we described this course at Myrtle Beach, there's a guardrail, and right down the middle of it, there's Dennis's wife and son and yeah, boy. That's his new baby boy. Yeah, Julie was happy to see him throttle out of that baby. We understand that Dennis Anderson's grave digger is not going to make it to the first round. We'll, we'll see if we can find out more on that in just a moment. But look at, again, how close he gets to the guardrail that runs in between these two lanes. Boy, that was almost a big, big time problem for Dennis Anderson. And if he'd have landed on his roof on that guardrail, you'd have been talking about some big time problems for the truck from Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Army Armstrong is over with Dennis Anderson to find out exactly what's wrong. Dennis Anderson, one of the crowd favorites. Uh, word we're getting is you're not going to make this first round. No, I'm not, Army. You know, uh, we had some problems earlier and uh, with the gearbox and the... We went out and tested the truck. Uh, the gear stripped in the box and put a lot of strain on the transmission. And uh, when I got ready to pull up to qualify, I noticed second gear had a, a you know weird noise in it. So I come off the line pretty easy. Then I hammered the truck in drive. And then on the way back through pit road here, I could hear some noise inside the truck. And we went back and checked it out. And I've got a hub going away in the transmission, I guess. So we're not going to be able to make it. There's not enough time in between rounds to change transmissions, get all the safety loops back on it. So we're going to be down for tonight. The word from Dennis Anderson, the great. Clyde Stale and Bennett Clark, the good old boy from Powder Springs, Georgia, calling the man in the black hat. Everywhere you go, you see him wearing that big black hat. And here he is, Dennis Anderson's grave digger, the most popular monster truck in the world out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Anderson rolls out in a beautiful 51 Chevrolet sedan delivery, engine to the rear, truck on the right, red light says, go, go, go. He's going up against the Clyde John and Georgia New England combination. Grave digger. Good looking run. Boy, I'll tell you, Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger got down there in a hurry. And Anderson had an outstanding qualifying run. Clydesdale wasn't bad, but Dennis Anderson knocking him off really by more than a length in just a qualifying session. Let's watch it again, Army. You know, there might be something mystique about coming inside the Flemington, New Jersey Fairgrounds. We talk about how quick the normal racetrack is up here. Qualifying is super quick for these monster trucks, too, Scott. Dennis Anderson's time of 6.69 makes him the fastest qualifier of the night. Chris has got him right now. Congratulations, Dennis, fast qualifier. Are you going to have any lane preference yet? Yeah, I think I'm going to stick to that left lane. I noticed the right lane in qualifying threw a couple trucks to the right. I think the off-ramp is a little crooked or a little bit short, you know, so I'm going to stick with that left lane all night, I guess. We've been talking about Bigfoot and Equalizer all night long. Do we need to start mentioning Gravedigger? Uh, I don't know. Those trucks are pretty tough. You know, he's got a pretty bad shot out there, but uh, I'm going to be hammering on the guys, you know. I'm going to try to get them. My truck is kind of outdated compared to what they have, you know. Their truck is, uh, is about 2,500 pounds lighter than this truck, but we're going to give them our best shot. Good luck to you, Dennis. All right, thanks. His shot was good enough in Jersey. Qualifying as the superstars of monster truck racing, led by the Grave Digger, take to the track to go side by side now in elimination bracket racing, drag style racing, as we'll see 
the gray bigger take on the wild hair fast qualifier is the bigger but wild hair is looking pretty good tonight too well quick qualifier legal is the bigger we got two trucks that will run quicker they're going to be coming working their way through the bottom of the field but right now anderson's got his hands full with starving marvin smith smith's hungry he wants anderson big time side by side with anderson come down oh we've got problems on anderson scott can you tell what the problem is what stuff is flying the Grave Digger truck. It looks like a, the drive shaft. We're getting yep. the drive shaft work. Yep. The, the slip yoke, the short shaft is gone. Watch it here. Here you'll see it, Army. There are the sparks just starting to shear off. Okay, now these trucks run safety loops, so I can tame the shaft from flying out, but that is a bad sign. Army Dennis is about done. Work your way over there and see if you can find out what happened to it. Let's go to Army. Well, this would be a classic case of a man that won the battle but lost the war. Dennis Anderson, we understand you are not going to be coming back with the Grave Digger. No, I'm not. That's that's pretty sad too, you know, because that uh, I feel like the left lane is the best lane to be shooting out of. I ran hard to earn that lane, and I told the guys after I qualified that my name's on that lane all night long. And then I come back the first round and uh, split the transmission housing open on the truck, so we won't be able to make it back. And and so you're there over thrashing on the truck right now, but uh, you know Marvin gets to come back and take my place because I broke. But you know the, those fast rides ended quick. You seem tired. Yeah, you really do tonight. I know you know you guys have been thrashing, you're chasing uh, these guys, trying to put wins under your belt. This piece is the first time it's ever broken on the truck. I've never seen that little that little short shaft break before. Yeah, we were just talking about that last week, you know, and uh, we have replaced uh, slip yokes and, and stuff like that when it get wore out, you know. And I told the guys in the shop there last week, I said, you know, this is this is the only thing in the last two years that has you know that hadn't broke on this truck. I guess it kind of put the hex on me tonight. From now on, I won't brag on any part on that truck. Bad break for Dennis Anderson, and again, even though the others had three second penalty, he was competitive time-wise with Bigfoot and with Equalizer, even if you take those penalties off, although he wouldn't have been fast qualifier. So, real bad break right for Dennis. Now the big thought I broke something, and I realized it was all my fault, you know. Well, that's kind of good news. You'll get to come back and show us what King Crunch really does. Yeah, you know, I think the motor's all right tonight anyway. It was just definitely my fault. Good luck to you. Thank you. Driver brain fade. Scott Stevens just admits it right off. Hey, here comes Dennis Anderson. And remember, Army, the Grave Digger was the fast qualifier a week ago, but then he broke in the first round. Bill, Dennis Anderson's the only driver that in no way can qualify for brain fade as a monster truck driver. You take it from there. <laughs> he is a wild man in the sport. I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah. i got to talk to him after the race. If you ever see him drive, you know what I'm talking about. Look at this. Go time. The Grave Digger. <laughs> he broke it down. Well, at the end of the track, there's some great driving going on. Just getting shut down and turned back around. You know, 6.46 will make him second fastest this week. So, obviously, Dennis Anderson, the grave digger, loving this track at Flemington, New Jersey. Well, he's able to really push it out the back door. Watch, now, watch the truck settle. Now he can gas it all the way, and it works great. This just might be, Scott, the night for the grave digger. He still, though, is four-tenths off the time laid down by Bigfoot number eight. We'll see if that has an impact later as the night goes on. But until a possible final play, play, Dennis should have his lane. Yeah, but right now, everybody's going after everybody. It's like an old-time street fight. Man, nobody's giving anybody anything. Look who comes out right now. These guys are hitting you just to see a smile come on their face. What a matchup. Grave Digger in USA 1. Every fan is either standing or right at the edge of their seat ready for this one. USA 1, Steve Wilkie, Grave Digger, Dennis Anderson. Early on, they're going head to head. Neither one of them really known to be good stoppers on the end of the track. What's going to happen? Uh, I don't know who won. We're going to have to check the replay. I don't know who's going to stop. That's the best stop USA once had in two weeks. I'll come back over the wall now. Grave Digger just cut the turn and made it okay. We're just going to have to look at the replay, Army. I have no idea. I was jumping over a fence when they went across the finish line. I'll be real honest with you. Wow, what a race. Grave Digger and USA won. Here they come again, Army. Let's see if we can tell a winner. We're still waiting on the official word. Scott, man, you make this call. I can. It looks like Graves in there, right there. 
There's your finish line, Grave Digger. It is Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger getting the victory by a whisker over Steve Wilkie and USA One. I bet Wilkie comes back as a fast loser. Here we go again, Grave Digger and USA One from another angle, and Dennis Anderson pulls it out by a whisker. Let's go to Army Armstrong. Dennis, you both came over here saying who won, who won. When you run down into that tube, that is just tough. Yeah, it is. You know, it was pretty tight. I knew it was a real close race. And like you say, I really don't know who won. That's why we turned around and came back up here. And this sport is unique in the fact that he can still be in this thing. To let a quick loser come back, that was an awfully good run he made. You may have to go against him later tonight. Yeah, that's true, you know, because uh, I've come back several times a quick loser and won the race, you know, and that's the same with Steve. The truck is running good. I've got my truck running good tonight. If I get up beside him again, I've got a little bit more juice under the hood. I just don't want to tear the truck up, but if i got to push it to the limit, I'll do it. Push it to the limit for Grave Digger Will, and he had to give it a good push right here. You know, what you're looking at here is a typical TNT monster truck race. That's what this sport is all about. Steve Wilkie's got him right where he wants him. Last week, lost in the first round, came back as the fast loser, won the whole God, shoot, man. Love this matchup. Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger. Mike Wine's outlaw. And Army, they both come in running very, very well. This ought to be a super race. You know, both of them are talking bad about the other guy. And neither one is going to give an end. Nothing else. Old Pride's on the line here. You got New Jersey against Kill Devil Hill, North Carolina. I mean, you know you're going to see something right now. Mike Wine wants to win. He's close to home. Dennis Anderson, he wants to come up here and thump this Yankee. Let's see what's going to happen right now. Outlaw looks good. Grave Digger takes over on the second set. It's all Grave Digger and Dennis Anderson. Problem for the Outlaw looks like a broken drive shaft. What a tough break. It was a good run for about the first 60 feet, but the old red light bandit goes into the next round. Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger was the fast qualifier a week ago, but broke on a first round victory. Tonight, those breakage problems have stayed away, and the Grave Digger has made it to the final four. He'll be going up against no problem in John Moore after this impressive victory over another board, the Outlaw. Army standing by with Dennis Anderson, the Grave Digger. Dennis, we're down to four vehicles. Looks like you've got John Moore in this next round. Yeah, I tell you what, old John's been running hard tonight, and uh, when I line up, I just got to try to put him away because I noticed that Bigfoot's out of it and I stand a good chance winning here tonight. I can just keep my truck together. I noticed there's some liquid coming out of the truck. What's that? Uh, it, it blew a little bit out of the uh, radiator. I think it's just got an air pocket in it. The motor's not really hot. We just burped a little bit of air out of the radiator. It'll be all right. We'll see you in the final four. All right, thanks. Mike Wine disappointed, I'm sure, with his loss to Dennis Anderson. Chris Chapman's going to talk to him now. From our vantage point, it looked like that front drive shaft was broken on the first set of cars. Yeah, I didn't know what happened. I come up the line pretty hard, went over the first set of cars. Usually if it breaks the drive shaft, it vibrates real bad. It didn't vibrate at all. Then I got on to go to the second set of cars, and it started spinning around on me. That's when I knew I only had two-wheel drive. Well, some bad luck in your hometown. Maybe you'll do better in Weedsport. All right, thank you very much. The word from Mike Wine and the Outlaw, he'll not be in the semifinal. Finish line. Here's the way the Carolina Crusher by maybe two inches. Well, I'm glad we do not have to call that. But I'm glad we do get to call this race. Grave Digger against no problem. Now, Grave Digger's definitely the favorite here, but Chris Chapman had a chance a little bit ago to talk to John Moore, who has had success in no problem against the Grave Digger truck. Here's that interview. I have beaten Digger before. Yeah, I have, and uh, I don't think it's going to be any different. Uh, he hasn't beat me yet this year. Have you ever seen no problem run this well? No, no. This is uh, this is no problem. It's uh, it's running good. The truck feels good, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna run the wheels off it. You seem visibly shaken. Are you gonna make it? <laughs> I hope so. I, I'm gonna have to dispute John Moore's theory that Grave Digger hasn't beaten him this year. But I will say that John Moore's had maybe more success straight up than most other trucks against the Digger. I asked Anderson a minute ago, what are you thinking about at the end of the run? He said, left turn, Clyde. He said, I can't shut it down. I've got to go left. Over, over, all right in the ooh. He almost landed sideways on those barricade cars. He was gritting his teeth and holding on for a ride. It shows you, Army, he knows he's got to go full tilt to beat John Moore. Oh, yeah, Moore pushed him to the limit. And he 
did there, but Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger has made it to the Monster Smash Final. So in this very up and down year for the Grave Digger, Dennis Anderson hopes to have a glorious night in Flemington, New Jersey, the replay. Well, the replay comes up. It's a good start by both truck Moore and a little bit of a problem coming off the first jump. Now, Anderson at this point, and all he's thinking about is getting that rascal shut down and turned to the left. Uh, Army, here comes Dennis Anderson. Let's see what he's got to say. Well, Dennis Anderson is getting down to only two. And you're taking a red light truck right in the middle of this thing. Uh, yeah, you said that right, Army. It's been some good racing out here tonight. I like this course. Although that's probably about the most uh, crookedest run that I made there at the end. I thought I was going to get on John or get in John's way and uh, end up stopping on that old set of cars down there. But we pulled it off, and it's going to be me and Porter in the finals. And I just got to try to hammer on him. You know, it's kind of interesting. You and Porter are really off the track. are very good friends. You help each other a whole lot and everything. You put that driver's suit on, there's no such thing as friends, are there, is there? No, it's not. Uh, Porter and I have gone a long ways back. You know, we've been in the business for four years together, and... Uh, We've always traveled together, but just like you said, when we pull to the line, he's got a reputation to live up to, and so do I, so we're gonna go for it. Here's Chris with no problems, John Moore. Yeah, it was. You know, I knew Gary was going to be tough. Uh, we had a battle a couple of weeks ago. Gary put me away. I kind of slept in the midsection there. I told him tonight he better tighten up every string in that old shovel he's got because old Digger's getting down to put him down, you know. And uh, I pulled it off, and it's been a long time, really, but uh, I really couldn't have pulled it off without my, without my uh, crew members, uh, Kim Bly and uh, Ronnie Jones, and my sponsors, Crower Cam, TCI Torque Converters, M30 Hand Cleaner, and the Wax Shop. Tell you what, you're looking awful good. Good, real good racing tonight. All right, thanks a lot, all. Grave Digger wins, and obviously the biggest story. But can you believe Equalizer dropped? Monster truck racing action. The big story before we even go racing today, though, is on one truck that's not here. The Grave Digger, who won a week ago on Tough Tracks, he'll not have a chance to make it two in a row. Army Armstrong's got that story. Well, thanks, Scott. As you know, normally this is the portion of the show where we interview the winner of last week's event. That's an impossibility. Last week's event on television was won by Dennis Anderson and Grave Digger. However, since then, in a non-televised event, the truck was completely demolished. Now, Dennis Anderson's okay, but I'm standing with the man that was running him when the accident occurred, Andy Brass, the driver Bigfoot, tell me what happened on that run in New York. Well, it got down to Dennis and I in the finals there, and both of us come off the line about right. We was running pretty well, even across there. I started to pull away, and by the time we got down to the finish line, I looked over and seen Dennis kind of heading off to the left, and I, I backed out of it and kind of watched him, and all he did was just veer real hard to the left, hit the wall, bounced a few times down the wall, and just really just messed the truck up. They said the TNT official had to use the killer box, and that's what actually stopped the truck. Yeah, that's what it was. I think what happened, actually, I think Dennis thumped his head up on the, on the roll bar, and inside the cab and it kind of knocked him dizzy there for a little bit and he just stuffed into the wall. Well, Andy, everybody's waiting for the return of Bigfoot 8. You came